make sure that you pay off things, make sure your debt is down, and then two, start saving money for a down payment. So I personally, I think I did like the 3% down payment, which was like the minimum. And that is it, great. You know, it's, it's great because in the beginning, you don't have to come up with as much money. But I do know a lot of people who, who purchase homes and put down like 20%, which is can be a lot of money for some people, especially like if you're single, it's just you, can be a lot of money. But if you're able to do it, long term, it'll be better because your monthly mortgage payment will be cheaper. And it'll be a little easier to like function, you know, manage your finances month on a monthly basis. So get your credit score together, save money for your down payment, um, get your debt down. So we'll put all of those in together. So get your credit score together. That, that encompasses paying down debt and stuff like that. Um, so debt to income ratio is something I wanted to mention too because that's another reason why you want to get your debt paid down because when you're going to get a mortgage, they're going to look at your income. So your income on paper, okay? So when you file taxes, whatever your income is on your income tax return, that's your income in comparison to your debt. And so it has to be a certain ratio for you to be able to get, you know, approved for a mortgage or a home loan. So check into all of those details, but it's just something I want to put in your brain to, to think about as you're going through this process. If you guys have any questions, um, about that or anything like that I can probably help so leave me a comment in the comments below and I'll try my best to address it for you so no I'm not a I'm not a loan officer I'm not a professional in this but I have been through the homeowner process and I made it through successfully so I'm just trying to share a little insight to any of my subscribers or anyone watching who is aspiring to be a homeowner okay and then let's see that was Credit score, getting that down, save money for your down payment. Um, what else? So you have to get a pre-approval when you're actually um, going out to, to look at houses. So you might link up with a realtor and um, if you're serious about actually making an offer on a property that you guys see, you need to have a pre-approval. So once you are at, the, at a place where you know your debt is down, your credit score is looking good, you have some money saved for a down payment, then you want to go ahead and try to obtain a pre-approval for a home loan. And so they say that you have to, or you should, it's recommended that you get at least three different um, home loan quotes. So... Don't just go with, you know, if it's your bank and they are sending you an offer for a home loan or whatever, don't just go with that because interest rates can be flexible or may vary. So you want to find the best rate. Okay? So once you've got your credit score down, got your money up, get you a pre-approval, then you can really be serious when you're going out to look. So one thing about me is I was actually looking at homes. Like, I was actually going out and touring homes what, three years before I actually was ready to buy a house. I thought back then I was, but I remember back in 2016, I would work with a realtor. We would go out and see houses. And my little sweet, innocent little self did not really understand what I was getting myself into. So once I saw a house back then and I was like, ooh, I like this, this is cute, I want to get this, then you have to give them like an earnest check, right? And that's like you giving them a check in good faith to say that you are serious about your offer and that part kind of scared me back then. Like, I, I remember giving my first earnest check for one property. And I was like, please don't, I hope they don't cash it. Because I, my money was really slim back then. And I was like, I hope they don't cash it. But I didn't know, going out looking, I really didn't know enough about the process. So I'm, I'm so grateful and glad that I did not go through with buying a house back then. Because I would have been screwed I would have been screwed because I, I was my finances weren't in order I was really in no position to buy a house so fast forward to three years later in 2019 when I was able to buy a house I had more time to do research and do some of the things I've already talked to you about as far as um, saving money looking at my credit score just to make sure everything was okay and then also looking at different options for pre-approvals so thankfully I did my research um, throughout the journey and I was careful when I actually went ahead and uh, completed the process to 
move forward with actually buying a house. So I think I gave y'all like four. If I mess up with counting, blah, blah, or number of tips, don't hold me to it because I didn't like write this down. I just kind of wanted to share some insight with you guys real quick to help someone. If I can help one person at least move forward in that process of buying their first home, that would make me feel good. So once you get your pre-approval, hmm, look around, you know, make sure you know what you want. Make sure you know what type of property you want. I knew what I wanted for my first house. I had a list of what I'm willing to take on and what I'm not. I knew how much yard space I wanted for my first house. I knew I didn't want a whole lot of yard space because I don't want to be responsible for that much landscaping upkeep right now. Um, I knew this wasn't going to be my forever home. Um, so I knew that this might be a property that I'll rent out eventually or potentially sell. Um, so just know what type of property you want and how you want to utilize it long term. Um, what else? So that's, I think, number five. Number six is don't, don't settle for the first house you see. I saw a lot of beautiful, beautiful homes. Some homes that even look better than the home that I actually have right now. Um, but thankfully, like, I might have been familiar with the neighborhood and knew that, um, during certain times of the year, the neighborhood wasn't that great. So do your research on the neighborhood. That's like so important. So that's what tip number six, I think. <laughs> Leave a comment in the comments below if I'm screwing up this whole count. But I think that's number six. So if you once you know what you want, I think number five was that. Mm, let's not even count no more. But once you know what type of property you want and you start going out and looking at those types of properties, make sure you scope out the neighborhood. Do your research on the neighborhood, the history of the neighborhood. That's all important when it comes to your home value, resale value, things like that. Because you don't want to live in a neighborhood. Like when you buy a house, this is it. You, you bought it. It's yours. You kind of stuck with it until you sell it. And that, that process is long too. So make sure you're in a good neighborhood. Make sure you know what's around you. Like how often are you trying to go to the grocery store? What types of grocery stores do you want to go to? Like, what's convenient? What's there to do? Like, all of this stuff is important. And by the time I was actually closing on a home or um, put it, I put a solid offer in, my offer was accepted on a house, I knew, I had, I had thought this all out thoroughly. Like, all this out, like my, my commute to work, my commute to my daughter's school, like the schools in the neighborhood. Like, all of this stuff is so important. So, just think thoroughly when you're looking to buy a house. And the next thing I'll say, I don't know where we are in number of tips or whatever. So I hope this was still useful because I feel like I shared some good information. But I want to say, the house that I have that I ended up closing on was like the last house that I saw. I was almost over it. I was almost like, you know what, I'll just do this. I'll put this on pause, do it again another time. The house that I have, when I saw it, my realtor was like, Let's go see this. It's the type of house you want. It's in the location that you want. Um, has a number of rooms that you want. But the, the listing online did not have any pictures of the, only one picture, and that was the outside of the house. So whenever I saw posts like that for homes, I was like, oh, like, I don't know. I wasn't trying to go see those. But she was like, let's go see it. Went to go see it. It was okay. It was, it was like blah. It was okay. The foundation was great. The, you know, the foundation layout was great. But it was blah. Like, I mean, y'all saw my kitchen. <laughs> y'all saw my kitchen before I started any renovations. And it was, like, outdated. But the structure was fine. Um, and I was like, I guess. So we put an offer on it. It got accepted. I was skeptical on it. But I was like, you know what? The foundation is good. And what I can do is I can renovate, right? And I had been doing my little research on renovations because I knew that I might have a property that is not exactly what I want it to be. I might change some fixtures. I might have to paint. I might have to, you know, do some, you know, some work. So I wanted to do some DIY projects on, or research some DIY projects on how to do that. And that's really when I got into YouTube myself. I was finding so many people, um, like, shout out to Wayna DIY. I love her. I was watching her, like, a year before I bought my first house, and I learned a lot from her. Um, that's probably my top YouTuber that I was watching, and then... Once I closed in on my house, and I was, like, eager to go inside and, like, start making renovations, like, instantly. And I was, like, like and I was just inspired. So that's what, what 
long story short, that's what inspired me to start filming my home DIY projects for you guys. Because I knew it was helpful for me to see other people doing it. To really see, get the real, um, get some real feedback. So all that is important. So that's why I'm doing YouTube. But yeah, just just know, this is like I guess my final tip for this video is just know that if you have a good solid foundation, your neighborhood is good, the structure of the house is for the most part what you want, you know you can customize your house. Sometimes it might take money, some projects may not take as much. If you do it yourself, it's not as bad, but you know, there's flexibility in renovating your house, even if it takes you some time to do it. Just know that it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect if you're willing to put a little like TLC into your house. So again, if you're looking to buy a house, just map it out. Just make sure you plan financially. Like I'm big on finances. I'm big on like, okay, what can I afford? So I guess that's the extra little tip I'll throw in there. I'm not even about to try to think back on like how many tips I gave y'all. I hope y'all could just scroll back to the video and like see. I hope this was helpful. Um, I wish everyone who's out there who is looking to become a first-time homeowner good luck and the best of luck because the process was so long and I mean even with this house I feel like when I had a closing date and it almost didn't go through like inspections and then negotiations with the, the homeowner um, you know having to make um, to do more things to the house to pass inspection and it's just a lot of things and um sometimes this didn't happen to me but another thing um sometimes your financing can fall through so just do your research guys before you actually go full force into trying to buy a house make sure that when you get your credit and your debt in order make sure you it stays that way throughout the entire process because something changes on your credit score closer to closing your financing could fall through and it just could be all it could be all bad so top tips for someone thinking about moving forward with purchasing their first house or getting serious about purchasing their first house number one check your credit score and get your debit down oh, sorry check your credit score let me do this over so okay recap top tips for anyone who's serious about becoming a first-time homeowner so number one, check your credit score and get your debt down. Pay down your debt. Debt to income ratio is so important when you're trying to secure a home loan. Number two, save your coins, okay? Save your coins because you want to need money for a down payment, okay? You want to try to do, if you can do 20%, that's where you want to go so that your monthly payments are on the lower end versus the higher end. Um, number three, I don't remember, but I do know, I don't know the order. I think I messed up around that time, but yeah, scroll through this video. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful to someone out there. Thank you guys for watching this video.